Merci pour cette invitation. Thank you for this invitation. Uh, First of all, I would like uh, to talk about uh, Pierre Péan. He died, passed away last uh, year. Pierre Péan was a, 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 an inspiring character, brave, courageous, and he would uh, be respectful of dignity of African people. Uh, and uh, he was able to clarify the situation regarding the history of uh, Africa, which was not always easy. He was uh, not conformist, and he was. He would, of course, call into question the consensus about the nar official narrative of genocide. He would uh, take stock of the situation regarding the RPF crimes, and to do so, as a consequence, of course, he had to bear the consequences. Whenever I think of uh, Pierre Péron, Thank you uh, for this applause. Whenever I think of uh, him, I think about the statement, don't worry about those who will be offended. If you tell the truth, and you should ask who will make a mistake, will be deceived and destroyed, if you don't do it. And regarding from the ethical profile, I never denied the genocide against the Tutsi popular people, and I will never deny the genocide against this ethnic group. I believe that, of course, we need to investigate, to elaborate on that in order to understand why Tutsis were sacrificed sacrificed in uh, 1994, especially in 1994. In the opposite, it's up to the RPF that tried to prevent any investigation about the role, this role of extermination of the Tutsi people. I did my best to uh, give, uh, to explain it in my book and in the uh, magazine, Ariane, how did the commandos infiltrate, infiltrate the Hutu's militia and they directly took part in, the, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, gruesome uh, ki mass killing. It's a fact the RPF and their friends want to deny this fact for political reasons. So the RPF is trying to deny crimes against humanity, genocide crimes. As in Burundi in 1972, in Rwanda against the Hutu population, in Congo against the local population, in addition to the refugees, Hutu refugees. Mr. Vedrin introduced some items about the history. Revisionism, revisionism, of course, is a duty for historians. And of course, this is our duty to denounce the uh, crimes committed by RPF. This is a legitimate exercise, absolutely necessary. And I consider the accusations against myself and other people are part of the of the arguments used by those who are in, in favor of the RPF. They want to prevent people to understand reality, truth, and to clarify what really happened. And Honoré de Balzac said there are two histories, stories, the officially, official story, which is uh, uh, a shame and, re and secret, the secret history, which tells you about the root causes of the events. My trip in Congo in 1997 was, of course, very much important. This is, I talk about this experience in my uh, book. I discovered very bad atrocities committed by the RPF, and this trip has become my quest, an active and personal quest for that. And whenever I realized how the Western world was was, would become complicit and, and it, less, it led to a kind of 
loss of innocence, if you will, and I discovered that those massive crimes were committed by RPF in Congo in, in, in addition to Rwanda that triggered uh, a, a bad feeling for me and uh, about atrocities. My choice was the following. Either I would try to uh, identify reality, the truth, instead of lies and manipulation, etc. Isolation and uh, contempt were much better than a, an easy consensus to, that would justify the crimes that would fuel impunity and reinforce uh, terror, pre prevalent terror. Paul Kagame sounds to be legitimate regarding the, according to the, nar the official nar narrative, because it was it is, uh, it is said that these troops were able to put an end to the genocide. More than 25 years later, this this is what is being said, even though political and military specialists in the Western world at the United Nations knew about the facts. They knew about the facts, per se. In May 1994, the United Nations did receive specific reports saying that the uh, RPF soldiers would shoot at the population, they would kill the, the civilians who would go escape in the north of the country. They would throw their, cor their corpses in the, in the river. And the international community, in addition to NGOs, did not say anything about, against the RPF. They did not denounce those crimes publicly. In the opposite, uh, uh, they allowed the media to say anything. The corpses, floating corpses in the river in May and July and June and July were Tutsi people, even though the RPF would control the situation since the end of April. And this is a big lie because those uh, uh, who was responsible for that, according to them, the Hutu population was, in, was responsible for that. But indeed, these Hutu people had been killed by the RPF uh, troops. There was no investigation that was uh, carried out further to that. What about the fact the United Nations would receive information and during the genocide, they said, they said that the RPF would invite the civilians and would kill them, no uh, sentence, no proceedings, etc. were carried out. All this was denied systematically. The RPF did uh, gather the population, the civilian Hutu population, on board the lorries, and they were uh, led to the uh, military camp in Gabiro and other places in the forest, Kakagura forest, where civilians were killed and buried and burned. And the fires, would, the, the, all the places were set aflame, not because of draft, of course, because it was raining a lot, especially in May and June, the RPF would burn the corpses. The United Nations were informed about that, the commander of, uh, of Minuar, Romeo Gertaler, who said that it was because of draft. Regardless of the uh, the rainfall in the previous month, what about the the satellite pic satellites? About the evidence of those crimes, the United States have at least 150 military satellites. The National Reconnaissance Reconnaissance Office. And the DGs of the Department of Defense built up and uses at least 50 satellites. These satellites have been able to capture the operations in Rwanda and in Congo that might give evidence about the war crimes, mass graves, uh, the soil, the, bu the bulldozers. The, the, the fires, the smoke, etc. Among those satellites, there is the so called Canon Keyhole. It's a digital camera around the Earth that enables to see those objects. And in addition, to, with the, uh, the lens mosaic satellite, the NRO, 
It is able to detect military activities, uh, killings, fires, etc. Having said that, you can, of course, uh, use those uh, images. The EU, the United States, have the possibility to use the satellites in order to track and, and to, to perceive their enemies, like Rakum Mladic in Srebrenica in 1995. This is uh, useful for uh, legal proceedings. And regarding the, the, the proceeding against uh, the Hutus, in Kigali or at the um, ICTR. Those images, all the additional information and evidence collected in Washington have to be declassified at least after 20 years. They've been declassified, they are declassified after 20 years, officially speaking. But I made a request for that, for the Free Information Act uh, to an agency, the Geospatial Agency, in order to get the images. In Gabiro and in Kagera, in that area that was under control, controlled by the RPF, where mass killings were, were carried out. But that access was denied. They gave me all the pictures, but these are not the pictures I requested. So, first of all, this, all this is classified. They, they told me, sorry, madam, it's classified information. In Washington, they have the same type of evidence about crimes in Congo. And, but 26 years after the, the genocide, all this is still, the access is still denied about the crimes committed by RPF. The investigation, by the way, just let me recap about the, 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 the this type of uh, uh, evidence which was denied. Someone talked about the uh, about Mr. Gass, Robert Gassani in uh, uh, his investigation conducted in uh, 1994. This investigation was uh, totally denied. A group of refugees in the camps in Zaire and Tanzania, they made an investigation, a partial investigation, about 20,000 victims. I have the list of their names. They were killed by the RPF in the north of Rwanda. This investigation was brought to the tribunal in Arusha, and there was uh, it was terminated. The investigation conducted by a priest called André Sibomana drafted a list of 18,000 people killed with their names, etc., in the prefecture of Gitar under the control of the RPF from June 1994. This list of 400 pages was delivered uh, to two uh, former members of the first government after the genocide. Those two people had to flee as Jean-Marie Dajimana, and they, they released the list at the ICTR. But not, there was no proceeding, and uh, the special investigation of the ICTR made by the police forces, and they deposited a report, a summary, a, a draft report about the crimes in uh, of the committed by RPF in 2003. So this report was uh, made it possible to give evidence about, uh, uh, especially against the commanders of the regime of Kayane, and 40 uh, pieces of evidence were provided from the uh, ex-members of the RPF, and they did attend the mass the war crimes, but nobody was uh, sentenced to prison for that. And you might wonder why this type of denial attitude. This is illegal. The prosecutor was, uh, was of course, Carla uh, uh, Del Ponte was able to do something, but she was uh, replaced. And uh, the ICTR did transfer the investigation uh, affair to Kigali. So the 
the killers had the possibilities to do whatever they wanted to do through the investigation. The United Nations and the EU, uh, they gave, uh, they allowed that Mr. Kagame this type of immunity that makes, made it possible for him to destabilize Rwanda and to go on with war in Congo. What about the, uh, the, the the assassination of Abia, President Abia Rimana. That was the triggering point. The Canadian judge, Louis Arbour, she did interrupt the investigation regarding this assassination, which triggered the genocide, regardless of the uh, uh, robust evidence uh, by virtue of which, of course, this president was killed by the commandos, in addition to the president of Burundi, in addition to the French crew. So we now we understand why the US and the United Nations have rejected this type of uh, investigation about the assassination, because it would have helped uh, understand exactly the reality of this type of legend about the root causes of the assassination and the responsibilities. A lawyer told me at the CRCTR said, told me <laughs> the, the villain is always right. He was talking about, of course, President Kagame, even though Colonel Bagasara, who was in charge of leading the, the, the armed forces, was also responsible for that. I remember the, the lawyer at the prosecutor's office said, this is, of course, uh, the RPF that shot down the, the aircraft. Everybody at the ICTR knows this fact. Nobody knew that at that time. And there was an abundance of uh, counts, for example, which would have been able to be used against those uh, perpetrators. But the reason why all this was not taken into account is because of the, the command chain and the operational control chain, because otherwise, Paul, because Paul Kagame was able to control the situation, even any mass killing, whatever. Consequently, Paul Kagame should have been, of course, indicted, but he wasn't. And a kind of plot. He said that it was a, a malevolent plot against himself. It is the reason why the investigation was terminated. Again, the, especially regarding the assassination of President Abiyamana. And at the end of the day, the, the uh, Paul Kagame and his uh, leaders were not uh, indicted. So that was, uh, they say that the international uh, justice was not able to open, pave the way for justice. This is a real uh, offense, an offense. So I would say that the ICTR has become just an instrument of justice. We might say that the same uh, regarding the uh, ICC, International Court of uh, Criminal Court. They had some evidence about that to, uh, to make it possible for Kagame to be indicted, but they did nothing. Now, what about this type of malevolent uh, plot. Africans ask me, why this uh, denial, why all these efforts to destroy, to hide, uh, to reduce, to dwindle the efforts, the, the evidence uh, of uh, because of the act, the action carried out by RPF? Why do they believe that because of the death toll, barbarism, etc., why is the international community arena uh, going on financing Rwanda? And why do they invest the, their leader in Davos, at the Davos meeting in the United States, etc.? This is the end game strategy in, uh, in, in, in the Western world. Uh, we have to step back about that. Ellen Epstein said, mentioned that fact the, regarding the support of Uganda in 1989 that led, uh, that enabled Omar al-Bashir to be in power and Washington would like to dwindle the effect of Islamists on the African continent. Sudan was of course, a, a, an attractive country is because of oil. And at that time, the United States started financially supporting 
Uganda with millions of dollars, because that was, of course, very important from the geopolitical profile for the U.S. At the end of the 80s, Uganda would train, would provide weapon, uh, uh, FPR with uh, RPF with uh, weapons. So the military aid from the United States to the uh, Tutsi rebels was, of course, uh, hidden. Secret, if you will. So the United States uh, didn't say anything about that regarding this uh, type of campaign in the north of Rwanda, at least for years. This type of invasion led to the context as it is genocide, especially in 1994. That was a game of chess, for example, which started Kagame and Museveni. They became the new. Uh, strategic uh, important people for the Western world and multinational companies did needed to access those uh, uh, resources for 24 trillion million of dollars regarding oil, gas, etc. At the beginning of the 90s, the production of cobalt and cobalt and copper, and especially this is important for electronic sectors, was. Uh, did uh, dwindle because of the uh, because of uh, Mobutu, but of course he was uh, uh, corrupt. Mobutu became a burden for the United States, a bur big burden for the Western world. Now, what about Zaire? In Zaire, Washington did support the military campaign. Uh, and uh, it was helpful for the invasion of Zaire in 1996 in order to topple Mobutu. The American embassy in Kigali played an active role in this uh, planning. For example, the, uh, some satellite images uh, were provided to the AFDL, the rebels, by a company called Vectel, an uh, engineering company related to CIA. And the multinational companies in the field of mining, like ticket mining, and based in Canada and American mineral fields, financed, helped, provided the financial support to rebels, and they made agreements with them before Mobutu was toppled. In May 1997, at the same time, the rebels would uh, uh, kill the Hutus in this uh, area. Before Mobutu was toppled, businessmen and uh, civil servants a senior civil servant organized a specific tra uh, trip to conclude uh, agreements the, that was uh, Robin Sanders, who was in charge of American affairs for the national NSC, National Security Council in Washington. So this is, of course, very clear. Uh, Kagame did open up this corridor of wealth to Congo and Congolese people, and uh, Rwandan refugees were uh, sacrificed. In eight, October 1997, after five months, we heard that, because of intelligence services in Europe, we heard that the special forces in the US had directly taken part in this military campaign in order to overthrow uh, Mobutu. And we can see that Washington and the lobbies didn't want any, uh, any investigation conducted by United Nations in favor of refugees. The penal responsibility is very clear. The, the, Amer the U.S. government, in addition to senior officials at the United Nations, are, have he been helpful and encouraged they have hidden and abetting those crimes, the RPF crimes in Congo. Sahel, what about Sahel? Sahel is a new land of war. During the campaign against terror in Sahel, the U.S. say they are trying to control the situation, the reserve, the production of uh, uh, raw materials, the digital raw materials in addition to oil and gas. In 2019, Washington did elaborate, uh, draft a plan in order to ensure the, the uh, supply of the raw materials 
because China wanted to deny the access. The action plan is able to identify 35 strategic elements, among which uranium, titanium, and rare earth. Pentagon is looking for a specific supply in Africa. Gadolinium is used regarding fuel cells or imaging. Dysprosium is used for, as an ingredient for the nuclear bar rods, neodymium for engines and turbines. Rwanda is a country key act play, uh, player regarding the, the, the campaign against terror. They provide blue berry in Sudan, Mali, and Central Africa. Rwanda is the third major uh, contributor of manpower regarding uh, peacekeeping operations under the aegis of the United Nations. What about special forces in Africa? The commander of special forces in, Am in, in Africa, General Dagvin Anderson, said in February that he expected the Americans to understand the nature of their interests in Africa. He said, you have to take account of the access to the raw materials rare minerals that are crucial for the tech, the, for high technology. We have to make certain that this material is not exploited by other nations or the market is not monopolized by anyone else. Especially that we understand why uh, the why they have acted like that. It's a kind of fuel that will uh, uh, set the fire and propaganda misinformation is used to, to hide uh, reality and truth and to hide atrocities. Regardless of this real politic, real politic and uh, regarding international relations, we have uh, a duty in order to uh, reveal rea uh, to the truth, regardless of any interference, political interference and denial of justice, especially because of tribunals, the, the, the acknowledgement of suffering and crimes committed by both camps is of paramount importance for um, reconciliation and to provide history the truth for the next generations. This is so much important to call them to uh, call them crimes, the RPF crime. We've, we are trying to assess the number of Hutu who were killed before, during, and after the genocide. And I would like to congratulate those who did the job. But I think that we need, of course, to qualify those crimes. I don't understand why we are unable to do it, even 26 years later, after the genocide. There is another reason, which sounds, of course, uh, that's so obvious to me. It is the reason why we need, of course, to qualify those crimes, the RPF crimes, namely the long-lasting wars in Congo. Uh, the F RPF is not the only the, 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 the single source of destabilization, but anyway, this, it is the main source of destabilization. In Kasai, in 2016-17, uh, more than 5,000 Congolese were dead, died, and one million of them were displaced in, in Kasai, a rich area where um, there are lots of deposits of diamonds. And uh, Commander, Commander Eric uh, Rimberi did order the killings. The general was a member of three of the militias conducted by Kagame for 20 years. Ruho Rimberi is among the Tutsi rebels who have committed atrocities, and he was he's part of the Congolese army now. These rebels, they triggered the chaos, and they are just fighting for the land, resources, and power.
Rouho Rambiare maintient les liens très étroits. He maintains a close links with Kagame through James Kabarebe and Jack Aziza in the Department for Military Intelligence. He cooperated with the Department for, Ministry, for um, Military Intelligence in campaigns against his own ethnic group. Two experts who worked for the UN, Zayda Catalan and Michael Sharp, were massacred savagely because they carried out an investigation about the massacres in Kasai. I just wanted to finish on the extermination of uh, the uh, 90 people, the criminal networks of M23, one of Kagame's militia, militias are still active in Congo. And General Delphin Kaimbi, who used to be at the head of military intelligence, was a member of AFTL, Kagame's rebels, in 1996. And in 2017, he recruited on behalf of M23. He also organized recruitment for the ADF militia, which is which is carrying out a terror campaign and which is killing every single day with the RPF's methods in northern Kivu. I received photos and pictures nearly every single day. Children, women, men who have been killed by machetes or by Agafumi, you cut the, um, the bone in, uh, in the neck, behind the neck. Those are RPF tactics. The aim of the campaign is to seize land to be able to cultivate it. <clears throat> I'll end with a quote from Jean Jaurès, his speech to youth which he pronounced in July 1903. Courage is to seek for truth. It is not to, to accept the law of uh, triumphal lies and not to echo uh, imbecile applause. Thank you.